So I'm glad to hear that you've started because I think that's a really good hint for everyone listening in today. The IRS is roughly 16 million tax returns behind. It could be a little more, a little less. I feel bad for the IRS. They've been hit by the pandemic. They've lost staff, et cetera. Um, so it's good that you're starting early because your refunds are going to take a little longer this year, about three to six weeks in processing. Everyone who's still doing it the old-fashioned way and paper filing, um, you want to think about that. You probably want to e-file. And if you've received child tax credit advances, uh, those happened last summer, there's a couple of different letters you're going to need to bring to your preparer this year. It's a 6419 letter. That'll tell you how much you got from the IRS, assuming that it's correct for those advanced child tax credits, and also a 6475 letter, which is those stimulus payments under the American Rescue Plan. Now, they, do they March. do they mail that to you? Because I haven't seen I haven't seen that. Huh? They should mail it to you. If you didn't receive the advances on the child credits, obviously you won't get it, Brian. But if you did receive them, yes, that should have been mailed. Alternatively, you can set up an account with the IRS. They are getting rid of the facial recognition software, as I'm sure you probably saw. Yeah. There's been some security issues there, but you can actually set up an account with the IRS, which is a good idea to get information your preparers may need. Huh, I might w want to do that. So that's for the child tax credit. That's something that people need to still deal with if they were advanced the money for it. I was hoping that yeah. we would just have to not have to deal with that, but we still have to file it. Yeah, and, and going into 2022, we're always big on planning. Remember, those child tax credit advances are only one year. Same thing with the increase in the de child and uh, dependent care credit for those expenses while you and the uh, spouse are working. Um, those expenses were increased dramatically for 2021. They will revert to their prior law, uh, pre uh, I, uh, American Rescue Plan levels. And that could cause an increase in tax for 2022 if we don't get some legislation. We could get some legislation to m extend those out a little bit. We're just not sure. But monitor your withholding in those W-4s. You don't want a surprise next year. Yeah. Wh what else is different this year? Um, what's different this year is we still have the above-the-line deduction for charitable contributions. Don't forget that one. It's a $600 deduction on a joint return. Last year it was $300. Um, we also had, as I mentioned, the child tax credits and the uh, uh, child and dependent care credit for spouses who are both working or one spouse working. Uh, remember that if you took COVID-related distributions because you were going to be suffering from the pandemic or lost your job because of the pandemic, you have three years to repay those distributions from your retirement plans from the date you first received them. So consider that as well if you're back working and things are good financially yeah, good I, idea to repay those i but I, and i talked about this t subject before you still have to pay some in each of the three years i thought you could pay it all on the back end on that third year but you can't you still got to pay some each year correct no you can actually repay it within three years you can do it all at once if you'd like to a absolutely you, oh, you can, can do it all at once if you'd like to as long as it's within the three-year period mm. no requirement to do it um the pro rata all right, so one of my major questions was the pressure to file early, and you clearly, 16 million uh, in arrears is, is a lot for the IRS to work through, so that's a really important point. Now, in terms of using, we're talking with Bob Liquar from UHY, in terms of like, you know, using, you know, a tax preparer, um, you, you just basically collate all the documents you get tax-related and just hand them over? Do you end up meeting and sitting down, or they can just literally take those and then find out what you might be missing and let you know? I still meet with many of my clients, Brian. Uh, my clients like to meet with me. I like to meet with them. I guess that's a good thing that uh, they like to meet with me. I think the face-to-face -face interaction is still good, but yes, you would collate all the data. You would fill out what we call a tax organizer, which asks about three or four pages worth of questions. Those are things that in case we forget to ask could lead to some tax savings. For example, did you make energy efficient improvements to your home or did you make any gifts to anyone that you had to file a gift tax return for? So yeah, those, those are very important. You would collate the data, get it to your preparer. You could correspond in person or 
the new way of doing it through Teams now or, or via the phone, but I still think it's nice to meet with people. Brian, yeah. I like that face-to-face -face interaction. I think you can learn more about people and their situations by doing that face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah, we're talking with Bob Liquar, Managing Director with UHY. You know, I don't know if this is an answerable question, so I don't mean to put you on the spot, but, you know, if people listening, maybe they do, I, I don't know, TurboTax or whatever, and they're like, you know, this is too complicated. I want to work with somebody. Can you give the range of cost it is for a family of four or five to bring their material to a tax preparer? Like, how much is that going to cost them? A lot of it depends, obviously, on complexity. And if you have a simpler return, you can probably get away with a turbo tax or, or someone. Um, most firms have a minimum fee. I want to say that in most cases, the minimum charge is between 550 and 600 dollars to do the returns things have become more complex over the years that's for sure even the simplest of ter returns are a little bit more complicated now uh, people thought it would be easier with most people not itemizing anymore roughly 90 percent of the population claims the standard deduction now but things are still a little bit complicated when you talk about various dividend tax rates and uh, qualified business income deductions, even if you invest in real estate investment trusts. So things are things are complicated, and obviously our business has seen the price increases as well uh, with the economy and a little bit of the inflation as well in the form of uh, additional costs to run your business, just like everybody else does. So, uh, but it's well worth it, Brian, because we don't like to bring that value add to our clients, where we'll come up with some ideas to save you some money going forward. Right. Look at your overall financial plan. Uh, just real quick, we're out of time. Where can people go if they want to check out UHY? Uh, they can go to our website at www.uhy-us.com, or they can email me directly at rliquar at uhy-us.com. All right, Bob. Thanks for the time. Good stuff. Really appreciate it. Thanks, my friend. Have a good day. Uh, you too. That's really informative stuff, Bob.